الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله ما توفيقي ولا ثقتي إلا بالله الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الحمد لله الفرض الصمد الحمد لله الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والشهداء والصالحين وآل كل وصحب كل أجمعين خصوصا منهم على ذوي القدر العلي والفخر الجلي سادات ديننا أمراء المؤمنين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى الأمين الأمجدين حمزة والعباس وعلى سيد الشباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين وعلى فاطمة الزهراء البتول وعلى عائشة وسائر أمهات المؤمنين وعلى الأئمة المجتهدين في الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم وعلينا ببركاتهم أجمعين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله وصيكم عباد الله ونفسي الخاطئة أولا بتقوى الله وطاعته وكثرة مخافته واجتناب معصيته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون ويقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأوا البقرة فإن أخذها بركة فإن أخذها بركة وتركها حسرة ولا تستطيعها البطلة ويقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تجعل بيوتكم مقابر إن الشيطان ينفر من البيت الذي تقرأ فيه سورة البقرة صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم If you remember um, those of you who were here about um, five about five months ago we discussed the chapter of Al-Fatiha and we mentioned some of the miraculous uh, aspects of the chapter of Al-Fatiha and one of the things that we mentioned and we all know is that in the chapter of Al-Fatiha we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hidayah al-mustaqim. we ask him for guidance so guidance falls into two categories there is a type of guidance that you just show a person the place they want to go. For example, if a person comes to you, comes to me and tell, asks me where is Costco, I would point them to the direction of Costco and tell them this is, this is the highway you need to take, this is how you go there, right? That's one type of guidance. The other type of guidance is if I took his hand and I put him in my car and took him to Costco and made sure he enters Costco, right? That's obviously the second type of guidance is much more effective. And when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance in the uh, chapter, of, uh, chapter of Al-Fatiha, it is the second type of guidance. We want Allah azza wa jal to put us on the path of those who He has favored. Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. Right? The path of those whom He has shown His mercy to. So we want Him to put us on the path, not just throw us on the path. Show us the path. Not just show us the path, but rather put us, put us on the path. So inshallah, I want us to keep that in mind. Uh, now, going back to the next chapter, which is the chapter of uh, Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. <coughs> Allah Azza wa Jal starts the chapter by saying, Alif la Mim. And then he says, that is the book in which there is no doubt Guidance for matter, guidance for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guidance for the God conscious. And then he continues and explains to us who the God conscious are. And he says, those who believe not having seen, or those who believe uh, in the unseen. And they establish prayer, they pray. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And those who 
give charity from that, from the wealth, from the rizq that you have given them. And then <clears throat> regarding the chapter of Al-Baqarah, the Prophet ﷺ says, read the chapter of Baqarah, for indeed whoever holds on to the chapter of Baqarah, it becomes a blessing, a barakah for them. Whoever abandons the chapter of Al-Baqarah, it becomes a regret for them. And the chapter of Baqarah is a, is a, is a chapter uh, which the, uh, the, the sorcerers and the sahars are afraid of because they're not able to overcome the chapter of Baqarah. Whoever recites the chapter of Baqarah, the, the sahars are not able to uh, overcome that individual uh, with their uh, sorcery and magic. And the Prophet wasallam says, Do not make your houses graveyards. Read the chapter of Baqarah, where he says, Do not make your houses graveyards, for indeed shaitan flees from that house in which the chapter of Baqarah is recited regularly. So see, these are some of the merits of the chapter of Baqarah. Uh, and these are some of the tools that Allah has given us to protect us from shaitan and from his whis uh, whispers and also from the uh, the allies of shaitan who uh, who involved who are involved in black magic <coughs> and sorcery and the, the the likes. Now going back to Alif Lam Mim, I think many of us have uh, heard these letters that we read at the beginning of the verses. Uh, these are uh, these letters that don't necessarily mean anything to us. Well, obviously, they are full of meaning because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put them there. But we are not able to comprehend the meaning of these letters. So this is some, uh, what some scholars have said. that, And this is the safest position, uh, which we are not able to comprehend the meaning of these letters. For example, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra, Ha Mim. All of these letters that come at the beginning of the chapters. <coughs> but Imam Al-Qurtubi mentions something else. He does not contradict this opinion. We obviously do not understand the exact meaning of these letters but Imam Al-Qurtubi says this is an, a challenge to the Arabs this is a challenge to the Arabs why <coughs> Allah Azza wa is telling them that these are your letters O Arabs these are your letters that I am revealing the Quran in so come up use the same come and use the same letters and come up with something like the Quran if you can so this is a clear challenge, and that is why <coughs> it's very interesting. In Arabic, all words are either one letter, two letters, three letters, four letters, or five letters. They do not, uh, unless uh, we add the uh, additions to them, but by nature, all words are either one, two, three, four, or five letters. And that is why the part of particles, you cannot find a particle that is more than five letters. It's either one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and a noun is either three letters, four letters, or five letters. <clears throat> a verb is either three letters or four letters. This is the foundation of, of the words. And if we read the Quran, these letters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the chapters with do not ex exceed five. They do not exceed five letters. So Allah Azza wa is telling them, this is, the, you know, we, uh, um, this is the foundation of your language. Come up with a, a verse if you can. Uh, like the, the verses of the Qur'an. And another great um, proof or uh, reinforcement for this position is the fact that every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions letters, He <coughs> mentions that the Qur'an is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentions the miracle aspect of the Qur'an, the fact that it's not from human beings. For example, Alif Lam Mim. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَقِينَ the, Inshallah, the, the verses that we'll discuss today. Alif Lam Mim Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayy al-qayyum nazzala alayka al-kitab bil-haqq which in, translates to uh, Allah Alif Lam Mim there is no god but Allah the the alive and the upholder and the heavens and the earth indeed he has sent down to you this book truthfully meaning uh, rightfully meaning this is haqq this is not a bottle this is not something that's made up Indeed, Allah Azza wa has sent down this uh, this chapter to you. Hamim, Tanzilun min al Rahman al Rahim. Hamim, this is a, a revelation from al Rahman al Rahim. Alif Lam Mim Sad, Kitabun Unzila ilayka. 
Alif Lam Mim saw this uh, book that was revealed upon you. Alif, ra, alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al Mubin. Alif Ram Ra, these are the, the verses of the, uh, of the book that clarifies, that is manifest. The book meaning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So <clears throat> it's very interesting how there's actually ab absolutely there are no contradictions. And even with the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the verses of the Quran. And that is why one of the challenges uh, that uh, Allah Azza wa puts forth is uh, Do they not ponder upon the Quran? For indeed, if it was from anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would find many contradictions in it. Um, so that's, these are the two uh, reinforcements for the disposition that, that Imam Al-Qurtubi uh, mentions. Now, going back to the next verse, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That is the book in which there is no contradiction, in which there is no doubt, I apologize, in which there is no doubt, guidance for the God conscious. Guidance for those who are God conscious. Now here, Allah Azza wa describes the, uh, the Quran by four attributes. He says it's from Allah, and I will explain how that is. And then he says it is complete. And then he says there are no doubt in it. And then the fourth attribute that he describes the Quran with, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the fact that it's guidance for, man, for, for the God conscious. For those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say this from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, ذَٰلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُنْتَقِينَ That is the book in which there is no doubt, guidance for the God conscious. Now, <clears throat> if, you, if you think about it, the Qur'an is in front of us. For something that's in front of you, or for something that's in front of us, we don't use that. We would say this, right? This is for something close, that is for something far, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, interestingly enough, He uses that. Even though we're reading the Qur'an in front of us, He uses that to describe the Qur'an. And in the Arabic language, in the Balagha of the Arabs, that was used not only for something that's far uh, when it comes to uh, physically, not only was it used for something that is far physically, but it was also used for something that, is, that was far, far in status. Meaning, um, the Qur'an being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is beyond the reach of human beings. Right? So metaphorically, this dhalika was used, is used for something to indicate, uh, is used for the Qur'an to indicate that the Qur'an is beyond the reach of human beings. Not physically, obviously we hold it uh, in our hands, but in status. Uh, in, in its miraculous nature. No human being can come up with it. Why is it outside the reach of the human being? It's because it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, that's the first attribute. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, it is complete. How does Allah azza wa say it is complete? <clears throat> he mentions, he says, Al-Kitab, the book. The book, he uses the definite article here. The Alif al Lam al Ma'rifah. <clears throat> Usually, um, even I think in English, but in Arabic especially, when you use the, defend, the definite article to describe something, it is to indicate the completeness of that thing and what it is. For example, uh, when you say Ar Rajul, you know, uh, the man, right? You're trying to say a man who is complete in manhood. He has all the attributes of masculinity. Uh, he has all the attributes a man should have. So you say the man, right? And so similarly, when we say Al-Kitab, the book, this means it is a book that is complete. It has all the attributes that a complete book needs to have to be complete. Uh, Allah Azza wa did not leave anything out in it. It is a manual for the human beings to be able to know how to live their lives. So two attributes so far. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is complete. Now the next attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> mentions is that there is no doubt in it. 
that there is no doubt in it. Obviously, some people may say, well, a lot of people doubt the Quran. But the question is, is that doubt based, uh, based on, on logic and the intellect, or just based on the ego and, and the effects of the environment, right? Obviously, as Muslims, we, we would argue that if anyone sees a doubt in the Quran, it is because of the effect of the environment, the TV, the, uh, the, the channels they watch. It is because of the act, effect of social media. It is because of the effect of the educational system. It is because of the effect of the ego, most first and foremost. Right? Because if you truly read the Quran and, and you analyze it, there are no contradictions. And as, as, as we mentioned earlier, we gave a very cl uh, clear example. And if, there are, if anyone sees contradictions in the Quran, they do not understand it correctly. They do not understand it correctly. Correctly. So why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say there is no doubt in it? <clears throat> because there is nothing in it that would cause a doubt. What causes a person to doubt something? Either mistakes or contradictions. Right? And Allah Azawajal has told us that He has protected the Quran from us. He will protect the Quran from us. Uh, he will protect the Quran for us from us. <laughs> he will protect the Quran from us for us. Because if it was up to us, we would uh, make many changes like the books uh, of the uh, of the previous previous prophets, what happened to the to the gospel, what happened to the Torah? Um, I was actually having a conversation with um, with a friend in uh, on uh, while I was coming here, a new friend. He was the Uber driver, uh, and he was mentioning the fact that uh, he he was distanced from uh, from his religion because of all the inconsistencies he found in in the books that he was reading. And I mentioned, I explained to him, we believe in the Bible, uh, but at the same time we believe uh, throughout the generations many changes were made to, made to it by men. And those inconsistencies you see are not because the word of Allah is inconsistent, but rather it's because the human beings made it inconsistent. So, but in the case of Quran, <coughs> Allah has promised, has told us that He will protect it from us. So we don't have to involve ourselves in, in, in debates and arguments when it comes to the preservation of the Qur'an because Allah Azza wa Jalla has made it very clear in the Qur'an that it is preserved. It will be preserved until the Day of Judgment. Right? So again, there is no doubt in it because there is nothing in it that would cause a human being to doubt the Qur'an. Right? There are no contradictions nor any mistakes. And then, after Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions these three attributes, the fact that the Qur'an is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that the Qur'an is complete and the fact that the Qur'an does not have any contradictions or mistakes, then he says, Qudan lil muttaqin. This is guidance for the God conscious. <coughs> so Allah Azza doesn't just tell you this is guidance for God conscious. He, 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 he basically, he uh, brings, he puts forth a logical argument. Right? This is not just, I'm not just saying this is guidance for you, I'm explaining to you why this is guidance for you. Right? And that's, that's exactly what we ask for. In the chapter of Al Fatiha, what do we ask for? As I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, we ask for guidance. Ehdina surat al mustaqim. And immediately in the in the second verse of Al Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us what that guidance is. He tells us that guidance that you're looking for, that guidance will put you on the path of those whom I have favored, is the Quran. Hudan lil muttaqin. And muttaqin, the God conscious, are obviously those whom Allah Azza wa Jal has favored. If Allah Azza wa Jal had not favored them. They would not be God conscious. They would not be God conscious. So, and it's very interesting how Allah Azza wa Jal begins uh, the chapter of Al Baqarah because we all have uh, have experienced this when we go and try to buy a book, especially in the sciences. You look for three things before we actually take that book and use it as a manual or as a, as, as a guidance for what we're trying to do. <clears throat> we look at the author. Is the author reputable? Is he known for that subject that he has written about? Right? And then we look at the book itself. Is the publisher known not to make mistakes? Right? Are there any contradictions in, 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 in the book? Uh, or uh, are there any mistakes, any typos in the book? Is the publisher legit, right? And then we, 
we, uh, we also look whether that book is complete. Does it have <clears throat> everything I need to be able to partake in this, uh, you know, in, in, on this journey, to be able to learn the science? Right? We look for three things. The author, completeness, and whether there are any mistakes. Right? And then we take that book as a source of guidance for ourselves. And Allah Azawajal is talking to us in our language, in, our, in, a, in, a, in a way that we can understand as, as human beings. He tells us that this is from Allah. He is the one who created you. There is no one more reputable than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the subject, to any subject. So this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is complete and there are no contradictions or mistakes in it. So take it as guidance. Now some people may say Allah Azawajal says Hudan lil muttaqin, guidance from, for the God conscious. <clears throat> but we know the Quran is guidance for everyone. Again, you mentioned two types of guidance. There are two types of two, two types of guidance, right? It is the Quran is guidance for the muttaqin, the second type of guidance, meaning it will put them on the straight path. Right? And it is guidance for the non muttaqin, human beings in general, meaning it shows them the straight path. It tells them, hey, that's the path you need to take. And then once they accept that path, then Allah Azza wa makes the Qur'an a guidance that puts them on the straight path. Right. Those who accepted the guidance, Allah Azza wa increases their guidance. And then Allah Azza wa in the next verse explains the muttaqin to us. Who are the muttaqin? He says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ those who believe in Allah, those who believe in the unseen, or those who believe not having seen, and those who establish prayer, and those who give from the rizq, from the wealth that we have given them. So this, he describes them with taqeen with three attributes. <clears throat> Belief, establishing prayer, the rituals of Islam, and being mindful of the rizq that Allah Azza has given us, and giving charity from that rizq. And if you think about it, <clears throat> The human being is made up of three main parts. It is made up of a ruh, it is made up of a body, and also we have the sustenance, the provisions, the clothes that we wear, the, the wealth that we have. Right? These are the three things that human beings have. So the muttaqin are those who make shukr, show their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all these three things. How do we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ruh? By believing in the unseen. The ruh is not seen. The ruh we have, we all know we have it, but it's not something we physically see, right? So we believe for the unseen, in the unseen. The unseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His messengers, His books, His angels, the day of judgment, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So we believe to thank Allah azza wa jal for the unseen, which is the ruh, in the unseen, which are the arkan of iman that we just mentioned. How do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the body? By making salat, if you look, if you pay attention, our salat is full of body movements, right? We break this body for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we put our forehand on the ground, on soil, something that we would not do for anyone else, right? We do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just show our gratitude, our uh, appreciation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, we give from the rizq that Allah azza wa has given us, and this is the third uh, main bounty that we talked about. We give charity, we give sadaqah, we give zakah. And this, this inshallah, may Allah make us for the, for the muttaqin. And these are the attributes of the muttaqin. These are the attributes of the muttaqin. I say this, I pray for you, 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 I pray for you,